Hi everyone, this is Kona and we're going to talk about normality is an approximation and this is in regards to uh, whether or not the data fits a normal distribution. And remember the normal distribution is that bell-shaped curve. So some of the ways that we can tell this, um, first of all, is skewness, which is a measure of symmetry or a lack of symmetry. So how we would actually tell this is if our skewness, which is actually a value that you're normally given, we're not going to actually have you calculate skewness, um, you'll be given a skewness value, and then you would compare that value and see if it's less than the square root of 24 over n. If it is, then we consider the data to be symmetric. Uh, if the data isn't symmetric, so if you do this and the skewness isn't less than that, uh, then we would look and a negative skew or a negative value is then to the left, and a positive value would be a skew to the right. So to kind of tell this a little bit better, we're going to look at these two um, visual representations. So you've got a negative skew, which would actually be a negative value, and you've got your large tail to the left. So this is where it really confuses students sometimes, because they're like large tail to the left, but this, this big hump over here is over here on the right. Yes, it's over here on the right, but this large part of the tail is actually over here on the left. So it's almost flip-flopped. So a negative skew, the negative has actually got the long piece over here and the high piece on the right. Where a positive skew, and so this is if you have a positive skewed number, um, you can see the big hump is over here on the left, which is more on the negative side, um, and the long tail is over here on the right. So um, what you want to look for determining if you're looking at a negative versus positive, negative is basically look where the tail is. The tail is negative, and that's left. Positive, the tail is over here positive, and it's on the right. Um, and this red, so also I apologize, the red is your normal distribution. So in both of these cases, the red is the normal distribution and the black line, the black curve is showing you the negative skew and a positive skew. So another way that we can determine um, whether or not data is normal is kurtosis. And that's if the data is peaked or flat relative to the normal distribution. So if kurtosis is less than two times the square root 24 over n, and kurtosis is similar to skewness. Um, we're not going to have you figure up kurtosis. We're just going to give you the kurtosis value. Um, so don't worry about that. But if it is less than two times 24 over n, then we consider the data to be bell-shaped. If the data isn't bell-shaped, then a high value equals a positive peak, and a low value equals a lower peak, a negative lower peak. So down here, looking at this visual representation, the red is your normal distribution. The green, see how the green goes up higher and is has that higher peak? So that's your positive. So if you have a positive kurtosis, then you're going to have, that's not bell-shaped, then you're going to have, um, it's going to be a positive or a high peak, or it's just, it's not going to be that bell-shaped. If you've got a negative value, um, the negative is going to be the lower peak. So see this negative, and that's a lower flatter. So this is kind of a sharper and this is a negative lower kind of flatter. Uh, both of these can be used to help determine whether or not the data is bell-shaped. Uh, for a perfectly symmetric bell-shaped distribution, both should be zero. So both skewness and kurtosis should be zero, uh, but anything close to zero is pretty good. And that's negative or positive values. So an example here, so here's some example data. If our n is 150, we've got a skewness of negative 0.20 and our kurtosis of 0.22, uh, is the data is skewed left symmetrical or right. And for this one, we've got, we just take the square root of 24 over 150, because 150 is the n, and we get 0.40. We then, because you remember 0.40 is what, our, uh, what we're comparing our skewness to. So negative 0.20 is less than this value right here. So if you remember up here, uh, if skewness is less than this value, then we can consider the data to be symmetric. So that's why the data is symmetric. All right, so then is the data flatter, bell-shaped, or sharper? That's going to be our kurtosis. So for that one, we just take this value times 2. So we got the 0 0.80. And then we compare that to uh, our kurtosis. And our kurtosis here is 0 0.22, and it is less than the 0 0.80. And so if the kurtosis is less, then we consider the data to be bell-shaped. So those are the two answers for that one. 
All right, so then we've got our example data of n equals 300, skewness is 0 0.60, kurtosis is 0 0.61. So we take our square root of 24 over our n equals 0 0.28, and we compare it to our skewness. Well, our skewness is greater than 0 0.28, so it's not symmetric. Once we know that it's not symmetric, we then look up here and let's see um, a negative skew. So a negative number is left, left and a positive number is right. Well, this one is a positive number. 0.60 is positive, not negative. So it would be right. So there's our right. Uh, the data is flatter uh, than a bell-shaped curve. It's bell-shaped or sharper. So for that one, we just take this value times 2 to get 0.57. Then we compare our kurtosis, our 0.61. So 0.61 is greater than our 0.57. Because of that, it is not symmetric. If we then scroll back up, um, so it's not less than, it's more than. So if the data isn't bell-shaped, then a high value equals a positive or a high positive value. If the high peak and the low value is a negative. Well, since this one is a positive, it's going to be a higher, sharper, positive peak. So sharper than a bell curve. So those are some examples, but we've got more. We've got visual. So these are more data-based. So we also have some visual representations to see of whether or not our data is a normal distribution. So first one is for our visual, uh, visual representation is the histogram um, with the best fitting normal curve overlay. So this one is just showing, so this very first graph figure uh, histogram is showing what a normal distribution, that's the normal distribution curve, and then this histogram is actually showing a normal distribution. What the second one is showing, and why I included two of them, uh, the curve is showing the normal distribution, but look at the histogram. Does that histogram really line up very well with the normal distribution? Not really. So the first one would be like, yeah, this is, this is great. This is a normal distribution. The second one would be like, eh, well, it really doesn't really look like a normal distribution because it really doesn't kind of follow that general shape. Um, so the closer the curve fits, the more reasonable the normal model assumption. Uh, second one, not really. First one, well, it matches perfectly, but I kind of did that on purpose. The other way is the normal probability plot. Um, and the closer the points are to a straight line, the more confident we are that it fits a normal distribution. So this is a normal probability plot. Um, you would never do this by hand. This would be something that we would do in Minitab. Um, and we'll learn how to do stuff like this in Minitab coming up here pretty soon. So these little dots, the blue dots, are our data points. And once we plot them and then do our straight line, we would like them to be as close to the straight line as possible. So the closer they are to a straight line, the more confident we are that this data is a normal distribution. We use the Anderson-Darling test, um, which we get by generating a probability plot, which is this right here. Uh, and it returns a p-value, which is a chance of getting our results if the population being sampled is normal, which is bell-shaped. So AD is Anderson-Darling. Um, image result for Anderson Darling test. And the p value uh, is 0 0.0002. So a p larger than 0 0.05, the population is normally distributed. Uh, the p is less than 0 0.05, and it's not a normal distribution. So is this value greater than or less than 0 0.05? Well, it's way less than 0 0.05. So that would indicate that us that this is not a normal, normally distributed population. So the plot for baby weight, we're saying it looks like there's not a normal distribution for this particular sample. So there you go. Here are some different ways um, for you to understand how norm normality is an approximation and some methods for determining if data fit, if the data does fit a normal distribution or not.